welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. This is a 105 Lut H 18B2, the French tier 5 premium SPG that most people know as a leppy or a leaf blower. This one is known to us as Fifi La Piu Piu and it's being commanded by Appa 561 on the south spawn of Mines. It's a 105mm light field howitzer mounted on a Char B1 hull. Game on! Well, this is one of only two premium SPGs in the game. We wish that Wargaming would bring more of them into the game. I know a lot of tank drivers don't want that, but the fact of the matter is there aren't enough premium SPGs. In fact, we have suggested a whole load of them that Wargaming could bring into the game if they wanted to, but they just haven't taken the bait yet. It'd be quite nice if they did, because most people would buy premium SPGs because they need them. They need them to complete missions. Okay, well, game started and he's aiming down range. A couple of tanks were just spotted. He saw briefly a KB-2 and I think there was a Churchill 7 there. No, the Churchill 7 is making his way towards the castle. Here's a T-1 heavy. There's the KB-2. Lines up a shot. Rounds out. Direct hit, only 78 hit points. Now the 105mm will do 410 Alpha, penetrating 53mm of armor. He just got another hit on the KV-2. Rounds out. And the other tank is a VK-3001H, which is now medium. Rounds out. Well, he took some damage there for 89 hit points. The standard reload is 8.92 seconds. And we can see there that uh, Appa's got a reload of 7.22. Rounds out the Thunderbolt. Direct hit on his front plate for 159. I think he's tracked. Rounds out. Oh, he's certainly taking a lot of damage. And we just spotted the enemy RT. I think he's over here. We saw the Tracer. Rounds out. Oh, he got a kill. He got him. Took out the enemy RT. It's an AMX 13 F3 AM. They do have another PP. And the Type 64 takes a big hit and a fire. But he didn't go down to the fire. He actually got wiped out by an IKB on our team. KB2 going back. Rounds out. Another direct hit. This time for 145. The KB2 is almost out of hit points. That one left him on an A28 left. Next shot should kill him. Rounds out. And he does. And he's got his second kill of the game. App is playing very well indeed. Okay, over on the middle island, we've got a KV-1SA, which is blocking some of our guys from moving up. Oh, that shot seemed to hit the rock. So he's adjusted his aim. Rounds out again. Oh, that one hit the top armor on the turret. You can see the mark is right next door to the hatch. Top armor is the weakest armor, and he's just done it again. As we're finding out in uh, certain current events, top armor on tanks really makes them vulnerable. KV-1SA doesn't like it. He's backing up, which will give Appa a chance to kill him. There's another hit on the front plate this time. Let's see if he can follow him. Next shot should kill him. And it does. Okay, I think he just saw the tracer from the enemy R team located there. Yes, there it is. We just saw him fire. He's fired one quick one in. And there he is. He's on the move. He's trying to get into the corner. What we call Nigel's spot. The spot on C1. Something I discovered nearly eight years ago, actually. Rounds out. Yes, we found out that spot was particularly good at firing at enemy tanks that were going up the hill towards the castle. And in fact, Wargaming, I believe, actually did change the map to make it more difficult for us to kill enemy tanks that were doing it. They actually heightened the rock in between so that our shells wouldn't always loop over. He's changing position. The enemy RT can fire this far back. So he just needs to alter his position slightly. Okay, there's Churchill 7 in the castle grounds. 
A T1 Heavies also moving up in the castle grounds. Now, can we get a shot on this guy? He's moving over. Fires a blind shot in, doesn't get anything. The T1 Heavy is being very careful to stay in the shadow of those turrets to, in fact, it's the shadow of the keep of the castle, to stop anyone from actually getting shots on him. If he moves outside the shadow, though, we can get hits. He's just trying to stop our KV-1 from going in. And oh dear, the enemy SU-100 is going in for our KV-1. He's got the 122mm gun and just got a huge amount of damage on that KV-1. Oh, we just hit our own teammate there, the KV-1. He didn't take any damage, but that probably disqualifies Afro from getting a high caliber if he does get it. Well, the SU-100 took some damage from us, 160 hit points. But we lost our KB-1. Okay, the enemy RT is still firing from that corner. So he's just... There he is, he's moved. He's changed position. That's it. A little over to the left, I would say. Rounds out. A bit further over. Just about make out the tracer when he fires. Oh, that one hit the target. Yes, we saw the tracer there. So he did get a direct hit on that spot. And there he is. He's on the move again. We've spotted him. Okay, line up the shot. Work out where he's headed. And... Rounds out. Walks straight into that one. And the kill shot comes in uh, from the M44 to take him out. There's only four left on the enemy team. They've got two heavy tanks, which are in the castle grounds. Two tank destroyers. One of which is a Hellcat. The other one is the SU-100. Oh, T1 Heavy takes a big hit. And it shows that we have earned 20% of the enemy hit pool with that shot. Sadly, of course, though, we did kill or hit a teammate, not kill a teammate, which means we probably won't get the high caliber. Okay. Unfortunately, the Wolverine got wiped out by the enemy Hellcat. Firing around in. No, that one hit the rock face. He's trying to loop the shell over the top of the rock, but it's not so easy to do that with the PP because of the trajectory. Much easier to do it with the Gorilla or the Hummel with the stock gun, which is basically the same howitzer. They've got a much higher trajectory. You could do it with a Burt, but um, it's, it's easier with the um, high trajectory arties. Okay, so we've got five left on our team, including both arty. And our IKV at the moment's got, um, let's have a look at the scores. He's got two kills. It's very possible that one of the heavy tanks is just behind those battlements. There he is, T1 Heavy. Just got spotted. Lining up the shot. Oh my gum, the IKV managed to kill him from the island. So he's now got three kills. And Appa's inviting him to platoon. Platoon created. And they've both platoon. So they've got a brothers in arms if they can both stay alive to the end of the game. Okay, so that means there's only two left on the enemy team. The Hellcat and the Churchill 7. It appears that the Hellcat has most of the hit points because, well, he's about two-thirds of his health left. The Churchill hasn't got much left at all. Oh, there's the Churchill. And he's right down the far end of the castle grounds, right at the other end of the hill. And you can't back up like that because that lowers the gun, which lowers your range. So he's pushed forward a bit. There he is. Now, I think that wall on that turret is actually preventing him from getting a shell in. Yes, you can see the, the red line. Where the green line stops is where the shell will impact. Either that or it'll overshoot and go into the other turret. He's trying to loop it over. It's very difficult. The best way to hit that Churchill 7 would be to go to the east and look at the Hellcat. Just got wiped out. He managed to come. He came out onto the middle island. And the Panzer Fear managed to go around the island, come up behind him. But it was the IKV who got the kill. So now the IKV has four kills. And Appa has three. 
Now, if Apple was to go onto the South Island, he might be able to shoot directly onto the Churchill 7. The only problem is we don't know where that Churchill 7 is. He could be sitting on the south side of the hill trying to shoot at anyone he spots. But we are now capping, so he should be trying to reset the cap. If he does shoot, Apple will probably try and nail him. He fired a, a blind shot in at where he thinks the Churchill 7 is going to shoot from. Rounds out. No. Okay, the budgie's going to make a, a circuit of the north side of the castle and see if he can spot anything. Proximity spot. We're almost completed the cap. And he hasn't found him, so he must be on the south side looking for Appa. And that's it. The game's over. We've capped out. Here's the end of battle results, and that was an ace tanker game for APA 561 in the Fifi, the 105 Lef H 18B2, Lefty or Leaflo, whatever you want to call it. He also managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 12. He got a gorse medal for doing more damage, exceeding eight times the hit points for his own vehicle. A brothers in arms for having at least three kills and being a platoon with somebody else who had at least three kills as well as a confederate as well for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. And he also got a win eight of 7,864 from that, which is super unicum standard, but sadly no high caliber. Yes, I think that shot on the KV-1 might have disqualified him from getting the medal. Let's have a look at the team scores. Well, he definitely did get the highest damage in the game, 2,913. And I do know for a fact that the 20% uh, hit pool uh, was 2,082, I think it was. So, yes, I'm afraid he did get the high caliber, but he lost the medal because he hit that KV-1 by accident. It was purely an accident. He wasn't trying to do that deliberately. He was going after the SU-100, but the KV-1 just moved in the way, and the shell hit him instead. So, sadly, he missed out on the medal there, but the second highest damage did go to his platoon mate, he managed 1,880 hit points, and of course, he got the brothers in arms. And the third highest damage in the game actually went to the Hellcat on the enemy team with 1,695. When it came to kills, though, it was actually the IKV who did the best. He got four kills in that one. Three kills went to APA and also to the SU-100 on the enemy team. And two kills went to the SU-100Y, the box tank on the enemy team, and their T1 Heavy. Their Fifi, by the way, he managed to get a confederate because he healed, hit an awful lot of our team in that battle. He must have hit the same number as Apo because you can't get confederates on both sides unless, of course, you both got the same amount. And we can just do a quick check on that. Yes, eight and zero. There you go. And I think if we look at um, Apo's figures, we will see that um, he got an eight zero or eight difference. Or did he? No, he didn't, according to this got a six difference but he still got the confederate maybe it's just that he got the confederate for more hitting more enemy tanks on his team right okay that's maybe what what it was when it came to base xp it's happy yeah 1154 the only one to get over a thousand in the entire game 839 went to the ikv 65 2 and the next highest after that was a panzer fit Asurung h who was alive at the end of the game and capping he got 530 Appa fired 36 rounds in the game, so he still had 14 rounds left at the end of the game. 17 direct hits on the enemy and 3 penetrating shots and 18 splash. Damage of 2,913 hit points, all of it fired at more than 300 meters. He damaged 9 in the enemy, killed 3 and got 213 hit points of damage assist when he tracked someone. He earned 37,738 credits profit from the game. And he also got 9,347 XP because he got a big mission completion in there as well. So very well done indeed. He said, every once in a while I get it right. Well, sure you do. In fact, I've got a whole load of replays that Apple has sent me featuring the Fifi. And they're really great battles. So I think we will be doing some dual replays or double replays uh, videos in uh, the future very soon. I hope you enjoyed that replay if you did. 
please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.